inspired action, what that means to me is it, it's basically the, the more feminine response to the hustle culture that we've come to know. That's kind of like a, the system that we, that mm -hmm. we live in, right? Where it's a lot of, uh, you know, the longer you work, the more you work, the more successful you are and seemingly the more worthy you are of success because you've worked mm. really hard for this, yeah. right? I'm all for working hard, but I think there is a difference between just working hard and working effectively, right? They're not necessarily the same things. Um, and then also another thing that I've also personally encountered is, uh, you know, what they call procrastinating, working, where you, you're always busy, you're doing stuff, Yes. It's not actually, and I think for business owners and entrepreneurs who don't have a boss and, you know, team leader telling us exactly what to do, this is so important. Are we actually staying busy doing things that will lead us to the results we're looking for? Or are we just, you know, busy? Hey, Lali community, welcome to Speak Up Light Up. Here you can meet industry celebrities, successful entrepreneurs, and thought leaders from all over the world who are sharing their transformational stories, speaking up the truth about their path to success, and lighting up with practical tools for self-discovery and creating own reality. And I'm your host, as you know, Valerie Prosetio. So I also invite you to join our community in Instagram because this year we will be doing some really special lives featuring our community members, providing them with more visibility because it's all about speaking up what you're doing, who you are, speaking up with your uh, talents, with your gifts, and who knows whom you can light up today. And in this particular episodes, we have very, very interesting topic. We'll be talking about the art of inspired action and how to reach your goals with ease and joy. Are you ready? Let's go. So let me introduce uh, my amazing guest who is tuning in all the way from Spain. Camila Quintana is an expert empowerment coach and host of the Empowered Expert Woman podcast. She helps ambitious global women overcome <clears throat> spreading themselves thin and playing small so they can become their own biggest lives claim their place and make an impact wherever they are originally from austria she currently lives in spain as i mentioned with her husband and three sons when she's not nurturing her family and clients you can find her making up exotic recipes <laughs> to the sounds of gloria estefan oh my gosh i love it <laughs> or contemplating life with loved ones glass of red wine in hand welcome camilla <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the lovely introduction. I was thinking like, okay, Gloria Stefan is so old school, but for some reason, it's like my cooking music. I always put it on when I'm in the kitchen. Well, not always, but I try to it really get yeah. me in the mood. So well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like cooking for me. It's like dancing. I, you know, it was like the beginning of my dancing career when it was so popular during competitions to have her tracks, you know, it was so nice. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know you were a dancer. So we have another conversation. Yay. For <laughs> yes. So maybe just like, you know, to give a bit of like background, how did your journey to empower expert women began? Yeah, okay. So um, it began about 10 years ago. I, even though I was really used to living an international lifestyle, I come from a multicultural family. Uh, many of my family members have moved to different places. I went to study abroad at early age. So it was something very familiar to me and something that I loved, right? Um, but when I met my husband, who's Spanish, we got married and uh, that was the first time I relocated for him. So it wasn't my decision to move abroad. Okay. It was moving for him. And um, it was just a situation that I felt really disempowered and really like I didn't have a lot of control over the situation. Also was like a lot of, um, you know, a lot of circumstances like we were newly wed so there's this enormous expectation that you have of what that special time in your life should be like 
I had just given up my career. I was head of marketing at my old firm. Um, I got pregnant very quickly, so I didn't look for a new job. I was kind of like in a limbo, like, what do I do with my life, right? And uh, long story short, I got my hands on a book by Tony Robbins, who presented at that time, it was such a new concept for me, which is like, hey, you know what, no matter what's going on in your life, and no matter the circumstances, you can take life in your hands, you can achieve great things. And don't let anyone hold you back, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, then I signed up for his coaching program. And you know, also like over the course of the years for several others. And uh, I really wanted to focus on that woman that I identify with so much, the expat woman who either moved abroad for good or she's, you know, like a serial expat moving to different destinations. And it's hard. It's a big life transition. There's yeah. so many things that are, you know, seemingly against you when you have to rebuild your life in a new country with a different language a different culture you don't mm -hmm. know anyone there's so much going on but yeah. you can really thrive you can really take matters into your own hands and I'm so committed to helping these women find their power and do that no well you know I think a lot of people nowadays can resonate with that and uh, you know even international you know marriages it's quite a common thing and I can resonate with this but and I can confirm it's such a big difference when you relocate somewhere because you're pursuing your dreams you want to achieve special goals and you got this opportunity somewhere and another thing when you give up something just to be with the person whom you love of course it's like you're following your heart and this is like a beautiful thing and remember my relocation to germany i didn't know any word in german and you know all these cultural differences everything building from scratch um but it also like in a great opportunity for growth like yourself as a human being but still, you know, maybe you have some tips how to minimize the craziness, because when you relocate, as you mentioned, there are a lot of things going on in terms of adaptation and for starting from, you know, bureaucracy things <laughs> on top of this goes, you know, how to find your friends, like be part of community, new doctors, new everything. And you also have to take care about your career. So maybe you can give some. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, if if you were the one deciding to move, so I, I would suppose that you went there excitedly and you really wanted this, it was your decision, then I think a good tip would be to just also be realistic about it. It's kind of like when you meet a romantic partner in the beginning, it's all amazing and you have, you you kind of think, well, they're perfect. Well, mm -hmm. nothing is perfect. No country is perfect. No people are perfect. No culture is perfect for you, right? There will always be something that triggers you. You had that back home and you will have that abroad as well. So just having realistic expectations, I think, and also admitting that, well, sometimes it will be hard. Sometimes there will be things that are frustrating. And that doesn't mean that my life abroad is a failure. That's just part of the ride. I think this would be my advice for someone who who went, you know, and it was like their decision. Mm -hmm. And if you went and it wasn't your decision and you're struggling and you're like, oh, if it weren't for my partner, I wouldn't be here and, and all of that. I'd probably say the opposite. Like, yes, it's true. There are things that can stand in your way and that can be really difficult. And I've been there. I really have a lot of empathy, but there are also so many great things. Right. And just because you made this decision for someone, it doesn't mean that you need to be disempowered. It can feel like that, but actually you are not. It's just a choice. Like, I want to be empowered. I want to stand in my full power. I want to create the best life for myself, even though the circumstances maybe aren't so great. So just having like this a little more of an open mind and not letting the fact that you followed someone stand in your way of taking your life into your own hands mm. well this uh phenomenon like idealization building some kind of illusions you know i had especially about the romantic partner or even you know idealizing the future place like oh if i would live here and there my life would be so much amazing <laughs> but it's about 
um, how do you experience your reality now not somewhere or with the like imaginary partner it's as you said yeah how it's all about you and yeah, yeah it's about I still agree with you Valerie you need to be where you are you can't be in your thoughts at least somewhere else because then you'll miss what's going on right now right so mm -hmm. yeah so I have a question, like, because um, it's new year, new resolutions, new goals. Are you setting goals for yourself? You know, because people are different. And there was a really, um, you know, it was interesting to know that not all people are setting goals. But what about you? Like sitting and writing it down just before the new year or maybe some are doing some months before. How is it for you? Yeah, so um, I think goals are great. I definitely, I, I am a person that sets goals, but I think that I like to do it in a little bit of a more creative way because that's mm -hmm. just who I am. So what I do is I look for like themes or mm -hmm. uh, feelings that I want to pursue in the new year. Oh, so wow. yeah. this year, well, next year, right? So 2023. I say this year. <laughs> this year because <laughs> This wonderful new year will, my theme will be radical visibility. And that means something personally to me, right? So I can see so many images of what that would mean, of how mm. I would need to grow into that, of what kind of decisions I need to take. So I, it, it's like this whole vision under the title of radical visibility. Um, but it's just something that, yeah, it just really speaks to me. Um mm. I don't have like this list of goal written goals written down for for a twenty three, um, but but yeah, I mean they will definitely come up, and there will be some short term and some long term goals as well. Mm. So you said it's about like theme and how you feel about this because yes. when you just uh, write down the goals you you feel maybe exciting while you are writing these goals as soon as you finished and you close your notebook or whatever whatever you look at this list like something overwhelming at the let later stage as so you're like tracking oh my gosh i didn't achieve this i didn't achieve that and it's your life's turning to be a rush but at That's the true. end of the day, we're not reaching the goals to say, oh, I reached this goal like on, I don't know, 31st of December 23, right? It's about how you feel and you experience your life. That's why I love that you mentioned this. And I think it leads to the main topic is basically what is this? leads into this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What is this um, inspired action to achieve these goals to make this your reality how you would like to feel yourself and how really experiences this now yeah yeah so I think you know inspired action what that means to me is it, it's basically the the more feminine response to the hustle culture that we've come to know that's kind of like a the system that we that mm -hmm. we live in, right? Where it's a lot of, uh, you know, the longer you work, the more you work, the more successful you are, and seemingly the more worthy you are of success because you've worked mm -hmm. really hard for this, yeah. right? I'm all for working hard, but I think there is a difference between just working hard and working mm -hmm. effectively, right? They're not necessarily the same things. Um, and then also another thing that I've also personally encountered is, uh, you know, what they call procrastinating, working, where you, you're always busy, you're doing stuff. Yes. It's not actually, and I think for business owners and, yeah, so I think, you know, inspired action, what that means to me is it, it's basically the, the more feminine response to the hustle culture that we've come to know that's kind of like a the system that we that mm -hmm. we live in, right? Where it's a lot of, uh, you know, the longer you work, the more you work, the more successful you are, and seemingly the more worthy you are of success because you've worked mm -hmm. really hard for this, yeah. right? I'm all for working hard, but I think there is a difference between just working hard and working mm -hmm. effectively, right? They're not necessarily the same things. Um, and then also another thing that I've also personally encountered is, uh, you know, what they call procrastinating, working, 
where you you're always busy you're doing stuff yes not actually and I think for business owners and entrepreneurs who don't have a boss and you know team leader telling us exactly what to do this is so important are we actually staying busy doing things that will lead us to the results we're looking for or are we just you know busy like busy, me, busy. <laughs> busy being busy right and then it's like this perfect excuse for yourself to not look at what you're doing and just say well I'm always working I, I work so hard so I don't know why it didn't happen mm. um and yeah for me that was for instance working on Canva I really love you know creating little designs and posts mm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. but I used to spend so much time on there And it's not actually what was getting me the most results. So that was for me, that was procrastinating working. So now what is inspired action? To me, inspired action is it comes from a place where you're so deeply connected to yourself and so deeply aligned with your vision and your goals. And you act from that place. You act in accordance to your personal values and priorities and, and needs and desires. And you have your big vision in sight. So mm-hmm. what is the most effective, what are the most effective, effective steps that I can take to get there, to get from A to B? Mm-hmm. That's the difference. Yeah. And I think we need to move away from that notion that, action is just about doing you know um actually the way i look at it is like there is this cycle action is a cycle right so it starts with some kind of impulse that you have that could be a great idea for instance this then like releases dopamine in your brain and it leads you to the next phase of the cycle which is motion action you start acting on that impulse Mm. Then there should be a next phase, which is correction, where you just sit down and evaluate like, hey, have I been, you know, hustling and really draining myself and burning myself out and not enjoying the journey? Have I been procrastinating working? Was this actually effective and and getting me results, even though it was fun to do that, right? So you kind of evaluate, you correct, you course correct. Mm. And then there's another really important last phase of the cycle, which is the pause. And I think, you know, it's so counterintuitive because a pause means that you are not acting. But then think about it. Even when you're sleeping, your brain is always working, right? Your brain is always processing things. And in moments of pause, for instance, anyone who meditates knows that great impulses can come again, or you have some great insight, or you have some some aha moment you need to pause for that so that's why I'm really a fan of looking at action in this in this cyclic way which is also I'm really into this like you know uh, a representation of the feminine nature of the feminine by rhythm and um, even like our you know um, our menstrual cycle we have different uh you know, traits, we have different hormones that take over. So it's a really good time to adapt the cycle to have some, some aha moment, you need to pause for that. So that's why I'm really a fan of looking at action in this, in this cyclic way, which is also, I'm really into this, like, you know, uh, a representation of the feminine nature of the feminine by rhythm. And um, even like our, you know, um, our menstrual cycle, we have different, uh, you know, traits, we have different hormones that take over. So it's a really good time to adapt the cycle to these different phases. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. That's so beautiful. I mean, there are so many insights for me now. I'm just like trying to like summarize them. It's a lot about, uh, as you mentioned, to do is not just like to do things and to complete them, but it's a lot about being aligned with your vision and do what really makes sense and brings you closer. But I think a huge part of this is actually your state, your mental state as well, because for many people, I think where it comes, the culture of constant hustling and busy to be busy it's because a lot of people are simply escaping whatever is is it like reality in general maybe some pain maybe some not satisfied with their relationships or whatever is happening we used to you know work like hide this with the work and not being really going the mode of processing 
this is one mm. of the element from the other side you mentioned like it's a you know feminine energy and i do can rely with this but then the question is how does it applicable to also men i believe there are like a very small portion but right. some men are actually listening to us yeah we have both and, energies and of men course, have feminine their feminine energy too right so if yeah. we look at these the masculine and feminine energy as something that's just like universal like a yin and yang yeah. kind of thing we we all have both and i think the the feminine energy the feminine traits of also maybe some um, more uh, sensitivity or, or or empathy they've been kept kind of small for you know like the past thousands of years because they were seen as weak but i think there's a lot of power there's a lot of power in in stepping back and pausing there's a lot of power in saying hey let me reevaluate if what i'm doing is 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 correct and maybe even you know uh, admit well this wasn't the right way so i think these are traits that aren't you know exclusive to to gender mm -hmm. we're kind of like moving beyond gender in in this and just look at what can we get from from these energies that mm -hmm. are universal. So it's about more embracing for men, let's say, the feminine inside, and for women, obviously, the male like energy to, to actually make things happen. Yeah, also to yes, and like find that in, a, in this perfect union. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yes. Okay, so. And even like we have, for example, we have an, a vision, we have a goal, we know, okay, to get there, I have to do this, like action one, action two, like we have an action plan. But, you know, sometimes it's really hard to stay on track because life is a cycle, things are going on. And it's great to be, I mean, when it's the beginning of the phase, it might be very exciting because this is the part of who we are. One of our needs is a need in novelty, trying something new. I don't know, from starting to read a new book to starting a new business project. And the beginning is like all exciting and so fun. And somewhere I think like in the middle, like when you're close to the middle, the excitement goes down, the motivation goes down. That's why now we are still talking about the year in the beginning of the cycle it's the new year we have new goals it's so exciting but you know how to 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 keep this momentum to keep this energy stay on track yeah i know and i guess it's also normal for that to happen so again right don't think that you fail just because you have a little bit of a dip and a plateau when things are moving more slowly or you might even be taking some steps backwards seemingly but they might be a great lesson in itself as well um i think and we mentioned that before it's really important to always chase the feeling behind the goal that you set for yourself because that's what our brain is really looking for our brain always wants to achieve things that will either make us feel good or avoid for us feeling bad mm -hmm. so i think the feeling behind what we put down like this this great sounding goal is much more important than the actual goal. Mm -hmm. um, so if if you can link your goals to the feeling that you really hope to get from that and always remind you of that, I do believe that's a great uh, intrinsic way to motivate yourself, to always remind yourself of that. Um, and also, I'm such a fan of surrounding myself with the right people, mm -hmm. the, the kind of people that will help me stay on track, even if it's a bit difficult. And I know... I, you know, I guess many of the audience, many people in the audience are entrepreneurs. Mm. Um, so I know sometimes it's it's difficult to find that try because it, it might be something that you're, you know, you're doing by yourself or, or you're, you know, you have people that you're in charge of, but not like those uh, sparing partners. So, um, so yeah, but still to look for them. And you mentioned that you have this community, right, on, on Instagram, right? Um, just to be part of the community and to to hold each other accountable and also cheer each other on and, and cheer each yeah. other up when you're in need. I think that is so beautiful and so powerful. And then mm -hmm. last but not least, always reminding yourself of your big vision and why you're doing this. You need to have a really strong why in order to keep fighting, especially when things are a little difficult or a little slow. 
if you're not really sure why you're doing what you're doing and if it's worth all the effort, then you need to take a step back and, you know, correction phase and work on that. Like, mm-hmm. why is what you're doing so important that I think when when what you do when what you do is so important, you create this this need to do it because it's not just about yourself. Mm. It's about others too. Mm. And it's like, you know, it leads again to the fact that the goal initially should be yours. It's not just like, you know, um, something imprinted from, I don't know, maybe family members or it comes from society. It should be really yours that finds this resonation and resonating with you and finds this inspiration deep inside. Um, I'm really interested what kind of tools help you on a daily basis um you know just to keep your state like vibrations high let's say because it's all about energy what kind of people you attract in your life what kind of opportunities so what really helps you to keep this um great state feel good about yourself yeah um ah, that's a good question because i absolutely agree that your state of mind uh and and kind of being able to tap into that higher self energy right Mm -hmm. is crucial and to act from that place is crucial to uh, in order to set the right goals and to take the right action steps and to make the right decisions Mm -hmm. um i do believe that this will be achieved for different people in a different way And I think it's really important for that to know yourself really well. Like, what do you need? So um, it could be like, what kind of work environment do I need to actually be productive? Uh, Do I need to, is it okay for me to work from home? Or like many people say, no, I need to go to this kind of atmosphere where everyone is working and everyone is busy and that will help me. And also again, right, to really have an open mind and see what's working, uh, not using excuses for why you can't get your stuff done just because you haven't done the work of looking into what's best for you and and you know just because someone else is doing it differently it doesn't mean that that will work for you mm. um and uh yeah also i think the pause is really important to stay motivated mm. um i actually do have a difficult time <laughs> pausing yes. but i have my yoga practice i mm. I try to meditate. I don't do it as much as I would like, but when I do, it's always a really special experience that I feel so refreshed after. Mm -hmm. Um, I break up my day sometimes to take a walk. I'm very lucky because I live near the beach so I can actually walk along the beach. I know not everyone has that. Um, A lot of people, you know, take a break and go jogging or do some kind of sports. So um, I think, you know, especially when you're an entrepreneur, you really need to be a CEO, even though you don't look at yourself that way, but you need to be the CEO, even if you're not an entrepreneur, let's just say everyone needs to be the CEO of their lives. And it means that you have certain conditions, you know, you have a certain personality, you have certain needs and, and um, a certain way to be motivated. And you need to be really wise and aware of what that is and how you can get the best out of out of yourself, right? So not your your employees, but yourself and how you can really pursue this, this big vision of you and always staying aligned with that vision so that it can guide you in your next steps. So everything leads to the fact that you need to know yourself. <laughs> I'll start yeah. like exploring yourself because it's, it's, it's becoming very popular to say, you know, write the books or say, okay, this is the thing how you have to start your morning, your morning routine, ABC. This you, If you want to be successful, this is the habits or I don't know, um, lifestyle that you have to have. <laughs> but for some people, yeah. it works perfectly and they prove and, and confirm for some people it doesn't work to wake up at 5 a.m and be productive the whole day so simply because you have headaches I don't know. <laughs> so, exactly. and i so think it takes a lot of said. confidence to say this actually does not work for me i will not do it just like the others do and i will find my own way it takes confidence to do that but i think it's so important i actually you know in my own life I've worked with so many business coaches to teach me exactly like how to run an online business. And I wanted to do everything right. And in the end, I noticed that I was so confused, you know, because it's like, 
I'm I'm about to take action, but then I'm yes. checking in with myself. Is, wait, is this the right strategy? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? What would my business coach say? So I always say I spent like the four the first four years of my business trying to learn it all, and now I'll spend the next four years trying to unlearn it all. I'm still having that basis that I'm grateful for. I am grateful for the strategies, but now it's time to find my own way with this mm. and do what really suits me and works for me. I have three kids, so I can't, you know, I have yeah. really bad nights with my little ones. I just cannot get up at 5 a.m. I would love to, but I cannot. Um, and these are just things that, you know, you don't need to do it like everyone else. Other mm. people don't have the same circumstances as you and they have different needs and maybe you're a night owl maybe you're not meant to have a morning routine you're meant to do these things at nighttime who knows it's okay um we don't need to be yeah. clones of each other that's so true thank you very much for sharing these um, insights your personal experience and wisdom you know at the end i always ask my guests to envision themselves as creators because we are creators of our own uh, life or our own universe call it as you wish so camilla creator would like what what how would you like to light up our audience today okay so i think you know um, piggybacking on this last point I would say, listen inward and do what feels right to you and what's right for you. I think this is also where inspired action comes from, that you really take in yourself in, inside and your, your personal vision as a reference for what you need to do. You're not looking left, you're not looking right, you're not listen, listening to on so-and-so and to your you know, colleague so-and-so you are using yourself as a reference you are open to grow and to learn to make some mistakes there's no you know there's no shame in that that's part of the journey and just trust in yourself trust in yourself that you will be able to take the right action steps to make the right decisions and to reach your goals mm. i think it's a beautiful summary of everything what you've mentioned so thank you very much one more time and I wish all who are listening us a beautiful, empowered beginning of the year, but also keep this energy high and hope this episode really contributed to this. Oh, so <laughs> it's time to speak up, light up and create your own reality. See you in the next episode.